In spite of the dominance of market systems, since the dawn of the internet, we have seen an influx of freely accessible and modifiable information and digital resources. Today, the philosophy of open source takes the form of operating systems, open source software and many other things, often performing just as well as their proprietary counterparts. Recently, with things like home fabrication, the idea of open source has escaped the digital realm and entered the physical world. It's a great way to make the building of ideas as collaborative and decentralized as possible. So then, if open source is so great, why don't we apply it to more aspects of our daily life and social systems, or everything for that matter? Greetings, welcome to the penultimate episode of the Fundamentals of Resource-Based Economies. I am your host, Adam. The main topic this time is open source and how the concept can be implemented in the context of a resource-based economy. We will also go over what the free marketplace of ideas is and how it differs from traditional market systems. We're also going to look at how we can negate planned obsolescence through things like modular design. Without further ado, let's begin. In contrast to proprietary ownership, open sourcing is the practice of sharing resources and information in a way that's openly accessible, modifiable, and often free. This allows for things like open projects that individuals and groups can collectively contribute to. The best examples of open source that we have today are operating systems and open source software. Linux, the widely known open source operating system, was developed before both Mac OS and Windows, and because of its open source nature, it it now comes in many variants or distributions that cater to specific needs. Historically, open sourcing has been confined to the digital world. However, recently this has become less so the case, as things like 3D printing and open source agriculture demonstrate a new trend of open source hardware. The concept of open source can be useful in resource-based economies because it provides a framework for how we can cultivate ideas, share knowledge, and produce things drawing from these. Looking back to my previous episode, a collaborative commons would be perfect for this. Because a collaborative commons is largely based on cooperation over competition, individuals and groups will likely come together to perfect a few good ideas compared to the redundancy of competing ideas that we have today. So instead of having a hundred different brands of television all competing against each other, we could have a few different types that people collaborate to perfect over time. This allows for more standardized production which can reduce waste and enable future modification. In a resource-based economy, people are incentivized to contribute to the development of ideas and products because it means they'll have access to better quality goods and also because it will improve their social capital. If I have the want or need for something and it hasn't been invented yet, then I have the incentive to go ahead and invent that which I demand and then share it with others to improve my social capital. A design philosophy that works quite well with open source is modular design. This is the process of designing a product with replaceable components or modules in mind and making it easier for others to modify and add to the design. An example of modular design today would be replaceable computer components. I can acquire all the components I need to build my own computer system and then upgrade it later on down the line, adding more memory, more storage, better graphics, etc. In a resource-based economy, we could apply this to many other things, such as smartphones and tablets, living spaces, furniture, and so on. Say in an RBE, I want a phone. One day, I decide to become a photographer, and in order to be the best photographer I can be, I need the best device for the task at hand. It turns out I already have access to a smartphone. All I need is more storage and a high resolution camera. Instead of replacing the entire phone, like I would do today, utilizing the infrastructure I talked about in earlier episodes, I would order additional storage and a swappable camera component. Because the design of the phone is modular, I can swap out components to better suit my needs or as they become obsolete. This means that the phone as a whole unit will remain relevant for a very long time. And yet again, because its design is modular, it's also designed better for disassembly, meaning that at the end of its life, the product's individual components will be much easier to recycle. Modular design 
is a significant part of open source, as we see with things like modules for the Python programming language. In an RBE, the open source model would be applied to much more, and modular design would be a big part of that. As 3D printing advances further, we are able to print more and more things. Assuming the blueprints are open source, modular components could be 3D printed for whatever product they are needed for. So instead of buying a phone case like you would do today, you might find a design you like on online repositories, download the blueprints, and print out the design of your choosing. Apply this method to basically everything, and what you have is an abundance of choice that no market system could ever provide. There are many ways we could implement open source concepts into a resource-based economy, whether it be open source hardware, software, sharing of knowledge, or what have you. But how can things such as the sharing of ideas and collaboration on projects be managed in a way that is easily accessible and simple to understand? Imagine an online platform that contains an inventory of open source goods for people to use and contribute towards. Say I upload a design for a phone case to continue with the previous example. On this online platform, anyone can make a request for a phone case based on my design that they discovered via the platform. Others can also take my design, adjust it, and then upload their own version for others to use. If a few different individuals and groups were working on their own unique designs for wind turbines, these designs could be uploaded to the platform, where each design will compete against each other based on their performance. In this case, how efficient they are at generating energy. Remember, in doing this, individuals and groups are not competing amongst each other, only the ideas. Someone could upload their own product onto the platform, and someone else could make alterations and upload their own modified version of it. The behaviour of this competition of ideas will likely vary based on whether the product's performance is subject to personal taste or scientific objective fact. I can't make a scientific case for what your taste in cinema should be. That is, quite frankly, your own personal choice. What I can make a scientific case for, however, is things like what's the best way to generate energy and grow food, because these things are less based on subjective preferences, with performance being more based on objective quantitative analyses. In an open source world, while there might be hundreds of different types of chocolate that people bring out, with each person having their own preferences, if a few different teams are each working on a design for a space plane, it's much more likely that there will be a few standard designs, with new ideas being applied to those designs that would improve their performance based on testing done using the scientific method. What we're actually looking at when applying open source and the scientific method to a resource-based economy is in fact a free market, but not one of goods and services. What we're looking at is a free marketplace of ideas. By letting ideas compete based on raw performance and subjective preferences, we can ensure that the quality of products continually increases without the need for a monetary market system. While today, goods and ideas exist based on how profitable they are, in an RBE that implements open source, ideas will stand and fall on their own merit. One area that I can see this system benefiting significantly is the area of scientific research. In the monetary market economy we have today, many scientific institutions are neglected and underfunded, thus hampering their ability to conduct research and to do it swiftly. In an RBE that incorporates open source, innovations will become more frequent and research will be expedited because the scientific community will have the resources it needs and because nearly all information will be open source and readily available to obtain. In short, open source allows for the free flow of ideas and collaboration. If enough people think that an idea is worthwhile, then chances are people will cooperate with each other in order to bring it to fruition. This pairs well with other concepts within resource-based economies, such as gift economics and access over ownership. Open source is inherently access-based, and building social capital can be a great incentive for contributing towards open source projects. Modular design helps enhance individual choice and is also a good counter to planned obsolescence. Overall, the concepts of open source and the free marketplace of ideas can be instrumental in moving towards and also very much within a resource-based economy. The next video I make 
will probably be the last episode of this series. It's going to be centered around city system design and designing physical and social environments. And it's going to incorporate a lot of the stuff I've talked about in prior episodes of this series. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like this and want to see more content, then click subscribe and turn on notifications. Sharing this video and others on social media and other platforms helps the channel gain exposure and helps raise awareness of ideas like resource-based economies. I've been Adam, this is me, signing off, and I'll see you next time for the final episode of The Fundamentals of RBEs.